Lefty. <laughs> What's up, everybody? Welcome to Tuck Rule Takes, episode 127. Here with you today, me, myself, I'm Mike. Big Al is with us as well. Say hello, Al. Hello, Al. There he is. Real original. And Liam is here as well. Mahalo. Little little shirts unbuttoned a little bit, you know, on oh, a yeah. Monday. And, and a as, it, as the podcast goes on, we'll progressively drop a button or two. But as of right now, we'll keep it calm, cool, and collect. We'll just drop the two buttons. I like it. I'm, I'm not even wearing pants and people don't even know. So that's wow. a uh, well, baby. Well, now they do. Now they know. Now they know. Um, But yeah, episode 127, Um, not not a ton to really discuss this week. I feel like we're in that dead zone between not now and the draft. a lot to discuss my ass. Uh, uh, okay, we do uh, kick kick us off. Where do you want to start, Liam? Where do well, you want to start? First of all, you know, I think Al shares in my excitement here, and I may be cutting ahead in the segment palette. Fucking but guys. the New England Patriots signed former University of Miami wide receiver KJ Osborne. Not blown away by the name, blown away by the school. Alumni of the greatest university that's ever existed. I'm psyched just to have him in the building. Brings a tear to my eye. Al, what do you think of the signing, big man? <clears throat> I'm not as high on it as you as you are. I think I wanted the number. I wanted a different wide receiver from Minnesota. I think that we all wanted. <laughs> yeah, I saw a lot absolutely. of tweets like that. It's like, damn, you, you guys got the wrong one. <laughs> yeah. There was a J yeah. in the name, but his but the first name didn't begin with a J and the last name didn't begin with a J. So I wasn't yeah. happy about it. Well, I shouldn't say I wasn't happy, but I think this would be a good signing if Osborne was like a, a two or three receiver. And if they had signed like a Calvin Ridley or if they make a trade for like a Higgins or an Ayuk, mm -hmm. then the signing I think looks good because then you get deeper, right? Because then you get insert number one receiver here, mm -hmm. KJ Osborne, Kendrick Bourne, Pop Douglas, yeah, and then you have four good receivers there that can help you going into 2024. So, I mean, it's a low risk, high reward type of signing. He seems like a good enough guy. He seems like he's he represents all the right things, and I think that's what the Patriots want right now: high quality character players, just like Liam in 2001 when the U. I can't really make the U right now because I'm holding the, the mic. U. Yes, there you we go. Hands. There we there go. go. Yep. There Hold we go. Up, baby. But. I know it was like, Ew. but yeah, just like when Miami did the same thing, recruited high quality kids. It's the same thing yeah. with the Patriots, get high quality character people to come to the Patriots. Cause that's what you need right now, especially if your team's going to suck. We're building have... long-term here. Exactly. Right. Set the foundation He's a good for the piece. long term. He's a good piece. I think we can all agree. Uh, I have his stats pulled up from last year. I don't really care. Do he's, he's been around this. Um, 48 catches, 540 yards, three touchdowns. Not going to blow you away, but if that's your if that's your emergency third but fourth option, like you said, Al, behind whoever the number one is, whether it's a drafty, whether it's T. Higgins, who's still available, IU, whoever, then you have Kendrick Bourne, Pop Douglas, and then K.J. Osborne. You put that in there with Austin, with, um, Austin Hooper, Hunter Henry, and then obviously the running backs too. I think I, I, I would be fine – with that, with that wide receiver group moving forward, um, you know, there's nothing, no downside to this. Um, I do think it's funny that he's going to be wearing the number two. Uh, let me get, just get a little nerd on you guys. Jalen Mills wore number two. He was called the Green Goblin. Uh, KJ Osborne's last name is Osborne. Norman Osborne <laughs> is the Green Goblin, and he's going to be wearing number two. So uh, just you know, very you the, the, they're That's sticking actually... in the Marvel. They're huh. sticking in the Marvel universe. Good job uh, connecting the dots there, Mike. Yeah, nice you're job. welcome. Wow, you really welcome. went outside the box for that one. You're welcome. I, gotta say, I did. That was very far out of the box, and I love where your head's at. I still think we're all missing the bigger picture here. What's the bigger picture? We're all thinking too small of a scale. Oh, he is our third wide receiver in replacement of Devonte Parker. Like yep. we're free. This is this is addition by subtraction. He's gone. Anyone that follows up Devontae Parker, throw the parade now. I don't care if we win four games, five games, six games next year. Devontae Parker is out of the building. In 2020, 
separation stats by, you know, those next gen stats. Devontae yep. Parker was dead last in 2020, dead last in 2021, dead last in 2022, and dead last in 2023. Uh, can one only of, go up. Can only yep. go up. So Good dead last in all those. Osborne was out of 132 or 127 in his rookie year. He was 100. Okay. In 2022, he was 87. And in 2023, he was 83. Okay, so so I will better. take these. Yeah. All of which is better than Devontae Parker. He's gone. Our hands healthy are rinsed too. clean. Yep. He's healthy. He's, and, he, he has started or he has played in almost every game except his rookie year, but we're not going to count that. Yeah. So, yeah. But he, he's just much less of a bitch ass. Psyched. I, doesn't even matter about the KJ Osborne thing. With anyone to replace. Did you know that he squid. saved? He pulled someone from a burning car or something. I believe too. Oh well, yeah, just, read that KJ I didn't know that. was born uh, saves life. What the hell was it? That's it just was, that kind uh, of high character helped, guy you're getting from the U. Yeah, KJ Osborne helped save a man's life by pulling him from a burning car in Austin, Texas. Uh, wow. When when was oh that? Uh, ba ba ba. Low golf clap for in KJ 20, Osborne. Twenty twenty. Uh, no, earlier this year. Oh, it was it was March eighth. Damn. Oh, of last year, of last year. Okay, but still, but still. So, yeah, I think immediately already more likable than Devontae Parker. K.J. Osborne, you get the stamp of approval from Tuck Rule Takes. We're in. I mean, Um, it's not hard to be more liked than Devontae Parker. I mean, the the guy was a scrub. Yeah, the worst. I'm going to quote Stephen A. Smith real quick. This man was a bona fide (laughs) scrub. Yeah. He yep. can't play. He, he, he really can't. He cannot he's play. Fucking, he's fucking terrible. Like I, I still think the best, the, the best Stephen A. Clip, the best Stephen A. Clip is when you talk about Mario Chalmers. Where he's like Mario Chalmers uh, needs to be uh, locked uh, in a closet uh, away from anything that resembles a basketball. That's what we oh have to do with Devontae gosh. Parker. Yeah. He's gone. You're also missing out on. Not that we're going to get into a Stephen A. rant, but he's like, we have been bamboozled. I was just thinking that. Yeah. that Hoodwinked. Yeah. Let us stray. So Hoodwinked. Yeah. yeah. So, um, KJ Osborne, uh, you're here. Welcome. Um, we'll, we'll obviously talk about the, um, the, actually, you know what? Since we're here, we'll talk about receivers. Um, actually, no, you know what? I want to, I'll, I'll bring up the next one because I saw you guys giving this man a little bit of hate in our group chat. I just kind of want to point it out. Um, I, I'll let, did you guys have anything else on just KJ Osborne? No. No, okay. welcome to New England. Welcome to New England. Um, All about the you. The Patriots lost a player today. Um, I argue. I gave no I would, hate. This I would is say not an attack on me. I would say this guy gets a got a unnecessary, unfair amount of hate because some of his glaring plays were bad, and also like the secondary was injured. But Miles Bryant gone to the Texans. Um, listen, I'm not gonna have a fucking candlelight vigil for it. Okay, but I do think that he did get the shaft by some Patriots fans here. Um, not necessarily here on this podcast, even though perhaps that is the case. But just I, I think Miles Bryant will be missed, not in the sense that this defense is going to suck now. Don't get me wrong, but just I, I think he played his role well here, and I think it was a part of the media. It just a bunch of people kind of rallied around him to for to hate him and everything but miles bryant gone do you guys have any thoughts at all i just figured players moving on we got to at least talk about it thoughts from you too al was the most opinionated on this front i think he should yeah follow i believe he said fuck miles bryant i think uh, uh, if i remember correctly chat. that is just completely true. untrue i am being led astray run amok bamboozle <laughs> yeah. I, I i've been hoodwinked in this uh, situation but listen I am the most happy out of the three of us that Miles Bryant is gone. I just, again, and I'm going to repeat old jokes. I don't care. Another bona fide scrub. Because every time <laughs> I watched Miles Bryant, I would watch him get torched by a receiver on whoever they played, whether it was the Bills, whether it was the Jets, whoever, whatever team they were playing. When Miles Bryant was out there, bad things happened. And every time I watched, I'd be like, yeah, well, there's Miles Bryant. Yes, I understand he had that one play in Buffalo. Yeah, are we just going to forget oh, about the one play yeah, in Buffalo? Yeah, that one play where he got the Game-saving the play. Yeah, like, it was kind of, a, you, kind of a dude. big play. Congratulations. Even Nelson Aguilar had a good moment in the Super Bowl. Like, I get it, dude, okay? But you know what? <laughs> I think the Patriots didn't need Miles Bryant going forward. He was ser- Excuse me. He was serviceable at best. I See, I threw up just saying that. He's serviceable at best, but 
That's true. I, I, I think this is going to be, again, another addition by subtraction. And I think they're going to go younger in the draft. And I think that's why mm -hmm. they felt comfortable letting Miles Bryant go. Where did he sign, by the way? Did he go to Texas. Houston? Houston. That's what yeah, I thought. Yeah. Okay. Open so, your ears. I said that when I brought up Miles Bryant. Just listen. Well, here's the I know, thing. I, got, I know you were too I got busy static, thinking about. I got to give a shit about your ring. static. I don't so, care. I don't care. You wow. were just sitting there so, trying to think so you about. You don't your, care about the fact your, that I might have tinnitus. You don't care about that. I don't, I don't know what tinnitus is. I don't either. Do you guys want to know what tinnitus is? No. I can't. Okay. No. It's when it's what. Have you guys ever had like a ring? Okay, so we're gonna find out anyway. Oh, that's what that is. Yeah, it's like I have it in my left ear right now. It is the worst. Like it'll come on and it'll like ring, ring, and then it'll Al, go away. And Al, this on. is this is a safe space. If if you're being abused at home, if if she's hitting you, you can tell us if that's why your ear is ringing. Yeah, if you're being Al, hit in the I, ear. I, I, I think that's what's I called think... a brain tumor. You yeah, need to did, go get that figured out. Yeah. <laughs> God, I thought I was serious in us. Yeah. You all of a sudden come up with cancer and brain tumors. Oh, um, I think you're having Miles Bryant, aneurysm. though, to, uh, uh, Miles Bryant, know. again, not like cra the defense is still going to be fine. Like you said, Al, they're going to replace him by someone in the draft. He's not an irreplaceable guy. It's just, you know, I had to bring it up. Um, Are I we going to forget that... seven pass deflections last year? Come on. I never forget them. Okay, good. I Al. never forget those seven deflections. Seven. Al does though. Dixie he does. I very before. much. I will very much forget it, and I will be proud that I forgot it. Um. <laughs> so to before we get because because I want to um, I want to kind of wrap up the free agency talk because we are going to talk about Gerard Mayo's comments recently. Um, and then also um, the NFL has made some rule changes this year too. But um, of course they have. I, I kind of wanted to get your guys' opinion just overall on the Patriots' free agency so far. Um, and, and this will kind of tie in as well towards the end with Gerard Mayo's comments earlier today. But, um, you know, they Patriots fans, um, rightfully so, coming into this offseason, were kind of led to believe that, you know, mm -hmm. the team was going to not sell out, but um, burn some cash, I guess, would be a, uh, a phrase that could be used here. Um, on, on signing certain players and everything like that. But I, it, I can't help but feel a little underwhelmed. And I don't even mean that in a bad way. I think just underwhelmed for the, the options we thought might happen or, you know, we're thinking about potential fucking making trades. I mean, long ago, this started with maybe trading for Devontae Adams. Then it was, um, you know, do we get... Brandon Ayuk, T. Higgins, Calvin Ridley is the was the big name too. Like there was a, there were a few names out there, but I kind of mm. I kind of want to just because it, it's what are we three weeks into three four weeks into free agency four I think something like that. Something so like I, that. I feel like we're we're about a month. So I think we should kind of give our grades and kind of overall thoughts, moves that we wanted them to make, um, and then kind of also uh, our our favorite move they've made so far. So I don't know I don't know which one of you guys want to start, but. Um, just, yeah, how – just overall thoughts, grades, just about the Patriots' free agency so far. Liam, I'll go Liam. Off on this one. Yeah, I'll take the Rams. Um, right. It has been the weirdest offseason where they did a lot to satisfy us, but, like, nothing to really move the needle. And I – we will talk about Gerard Mayo's comments later. I think he actually made a lot of sense. I was never blown away by the free agents. None of them really tickled my fancy. There wasn't any, you know, world-altering free agents out there that could really, like, if Devontae Adams was a free agent, yeah, you'd move heaven and earth to get him. Mm -hmm. But none of the wide receivers that they wanted really would have completely changed the trajectory of our team. I think it's underwhelming because we want greatness. We want to get right back to where we were the last mm -hmm. 20 years and last year sucked. But I think way too many, I, I, I listen to or read way too many comments now, mostly because, you know, we're doing the Tuck World Takes Instagram page and I'm curious what other Patriots fans think. And they all want a QB because they think that QB is just going to springboard us into success. We'll make the playoffs this year and then be in the, conference finals the year after that and the Super Bowl the year after that and that's just not fucking realistic that's not how this goes Liam you uh, brought up Tuck Rule Takes real quick I want to say you the our Instagram has been popping recently with these fucking photoshops it has. yeah it has. these photoshops that have been Aren't going they up sick? He's of, the man of of the 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 projected top group of picks 
Yeah. And it's like, you know, their their college jerseys being ripped off with the Patriots yeah, jerseys coming in. It's like half on Holy the helmet. shit. They're I just, so just sweet. props to uh props to our admin team who runs who runs the Tuck Rule yeah. Instagram. And that guy account. who makes them, I think his name's like Matt Sharpring or something like that. He's yeah. fantastic. I'm yeah, yeah. I just, I, I just so wanted good. to throw the spotlight on that. Just take a look at their, yeah. their, their awesome. I, I'm going to, I'm going to go back and repost all of them again. Yeah. And it's so fun because like he, he just does it. He's a huge Patriots fan. During like the dynasty, he would always all the players that you wanted to be on the Patriots but never were. He would do uh, those edits. It was like a Larry Fitzgerald one. Go way back in his timeline if you ever get a chance. But yeah, no, he kills it, and it's fun to see him do each player that we want. But um, yeah, like I think I got to give this off season like a B plus because they're not going out and spending outrageously stupidly. You know what? I'll give it a B minus because I'm I'm still not very excited. Like they're doing all the moves that I would do that I want that are realistic, but it still doesn't get me very excited. Like re-signing Kendrick Bourne doesn't get me as psyched as it should. Like Hunter Henry doesn't get me as psyched as it should. Like we didn't go out and get Calvin Ridley, but if we paid Calvin Ridley 90 million, I probably wouldn't be psyched about that. It's the yep. ultimate double-edged sword. I have no idea really what to make of this offseason because I know we're not going to be good next year, but I want us to be. So I'll give it like a B minus because I know they're making the right moves, but I'm bored. I'm bored. Yeah, yeah, I get that. And and I think j- just to kind of piggyback off that, and then Al, I want to know obviously what you think as well. Um, as long as long as your ears stop ringing and you can yeah. and you can speak. Um, but I I think the uh, I think like Mayo kind of said it, and and like you you said too, Liam. We'll get into Gerard Mayo's comments too. Um, but he, you know, free agency. You want to sign the people that you want to retain, and I think they signed all the people for the most part that we wanted them to keep. So like everybody. Everybody's happy. Kendrick Bourne's here. Michael Wendu's yep. here. Kyle Duggar's here. Uh, uh, Anthony Jennings. Um, yep. Christian Barmore, they're Uche. exploring talks with. Uche is here. Um, you know, like they're they're obviously, you know, getting ready and signing people and everything. So like you're you're happy about it. But then you see names like Calvin Ridley not signing here. But then you get upset, but then you see the contract and you're like, ah, that is a big contract for, you know, um, not, not an old receiver, but not a young receiver. Um, yeah. and then you kind of look, okay. Like Mike Evans word came out. He was never really coming here. He was always going to stay yeah. in, in Tampa. Um, I, Justin Jefferson is like, I don't even know how that rumor started. I think it was just someone maybe was just like, Oh, Kirk cousins is gone. He might want to leave. Cause I haven't seen anything that Justin Jefferson actually wants to be out. Like any solid report. No, um, no. Devonte Adams, you would think he'd be miserable, but you know, there's really no talk there. Like it, it's really coming down to T Higgins and Brandon. Ayuk, and, and you're like, okay, like it is what it is. I don't know. Uh, Antonio Gibson, nice third down back, nice kind of secondary back, but yeah. Uh, and I love Henry. Him. Hunter, I mean, that I think is the one that people should be excited about the most, but it, it's just like, I would give it just a solid B. Like I'm not blown away by anything. Definitely a passing grade. I don't think it was, I don't think it's been an average off season, which is what a C would be, but it's just like, I don't know. Um, like I will, we'll know more once the draft is done and everything, but I'm, I'm at a B right now. And I don't know. Mm. And, and I guess like, obviously I think Hunter Henry to me is my favorite move that they did, but yeah. But yeah. Oh yeah. For my favorite move, like Hunter Henry's the layup pick, but I'm going to go Antonio Gibson because I've been a fan forever. Yeah. Yeah. I like him too. Uh, Al thoughts on Patriots free agency so far or anybody you wish they got, I guess that too. If you have any, that's a good one. Okay. So I'm going to be a little more pessimistic than you guys. I'm gonna someone go, has to. Yep. I'm, I'm going to say that this offseason so far has been a C minus. And here's why. The first day was great. Here's right? why. First day was great. You had Kevin Warren was re signed. Hunter mm-hmm. Henry was re signed. Mm-hmm. Mike and one who got it re signed. Like everything was looking up because you had three younger. Like I know Hunter Henry's like 29, but you still you had three younger guys that are going to be a part of the future of this Patriots team, which is great. And they're going to help the Patriots. Going forward, especially on offense. Yep. But then after that, yeah, you've got the the lineman from Pittsburgh. Yeah, you signed Antonio Gibson, which I agree with Liam. Nice signing. Yeah. Going to be a great third down back. It's going to be, I think, a perfect complement, even yep. better than Zeke Elliott. 
and for and I'll say for Leah, not that it's that hard. Uh, for it really isn't. For, you knew it was coming. You could see it in his fucking eyes. He was. Oh, I know. That's why I beat him to the punch. Dude, you like it's not that hard. Yeah, and so they so Gibson's gonna compliment Stevenson, but after that, I just feel like I, I don't know. I feel like there there was something. That could have been done. That wasn't done. Yeah, Calvin Ridley, I know they were close on him. I would have liked to see that deal get done personally, but it didn't, so it is what it is. I don't know. It's also like, I feel like it's still a little bit incomplete because mm -hmm. you still have, I know we're just talking free agency, but the offseason as a whole, you still have the draft, and the draft is going to be, and I'm going to quote like Packers fans, but it was like Packers free agency was the draft back in the day because they didn't like add anybody in free agency. It just feels like, the draft is going to be so telling of what are they going to do? Do they surprise us on draft night? And do they say, okay, I forget 34 T Higgins is out there. Let's go get him to be our number one receiver and then draft, you know, whether it's Jaden Daniels, if he slips, whether it's Drake may, or here's another name we're probably going to talk about JJ McCarthy, a name that's been soaring up the draft boards. Uh, yeah. So again, I, I still think that there's work to be done this off season. So I'm going to go a C minus. And then honestly, you can also go incomplete because I think there's more that needs to be done until we get a full representation of what this 2024 team is going to look like coming up this year. Even yeah. though I agree with Liam, it's not going to be great. Well, it, it, I, I think that's why it's so weird because you're like, like, I, I think we would all agree. Like, ah, like it just feels like there's something they should have done. But then when you think like, all right, what should they have done? And it's like, I don't know. Cause like the Calvin Ridley thing, like, I mean, he wasn't even going to go to Jack. Like, everybody was kind of in the ballpark. He went for the money. That's crazy money. I get not get, like, I'm not, I'm not mad. I'm just like, oh, okay. Like, the, I'm I'm happy with, with what we've done. Um, you know, it would have been nice to get, like, a big name. Well, well, Mike, what big name? I guess I don't know. Because even when you're looking at the names they might get, like, like Liam, you kind of gave us pushback last week. And, you know, obviously, like, I'm on the other side of it a little bit. But T. Higgins isn't the name that's going to, you know, yeah. immediately take you from, you know, six to midnight, but it's just like, he, he is still a really good, I think this is just like the off season of, you know, my, and, and I have, I have Mayo's comments regarding it kind of like overall talking about it. And I guess we'll kind of jump into the Mayo's comments uh, unless you, we can kind of do the free agency talk as well. Um, but he said uh, the quote, I'm just going to run through it. Then we'll talk about it. Uh, the clarity I would begin with is free agency, the media, the fans, everyone wants that big signing. But at the same time, as we continue to put this team together, I think there has to be a process. It has to be a methodical process. Look where this guy is, uh, or look, holy shit. Look, when there is a guy we want to get, the crafts have already told us they'll spend the money. I would say offensively this year, we were very picky as far as the playmakers we were getting. At the same time, that wasn't really an, a deep offensive free agent class to even make that type of splash. Now, in saying the draft is coming up, there will still be conversations as far as trades and all that stuff, blah, blah, blah. But I think he hits the nail on the head. The, I don't think like, so, though. The Crafts, the Patriots have been in the bottom 10 in spending for the last, like, 20 years. Like, they mm -hmm. don't spend money, ever. When did we ever go? We didn't pay Tom Brady, which I get strategically. You could spend more. We never ever use the money that we didn't pay Tom Brady for other guys mm -hmm. ever. Like no, we didn't that, pay Randy Moss. That's very we true. We didn't pay Corey Dillon. Yeah. We didn't that's fucking true. pay anyone. I like, think, so, I think so why he, we get excited now. We're not going to spend any fucking money. I think where he hit the nail on the head is that it wasn't a deep free agent class where it like really wasn't like none of it. Like, like we you were said, all trying nothing to really convince makes ourselves. the tube stick go. Like this yeah. is like, yeah. Yeah. It, yeah um, the, the talent's above average, but it's not stellar. Like no, everyone, we no want Randy Justin Moss. Jefferson for a reason. Yeah, yeah, we want just he's not even fucking available, which is crazy too. Because it's like that's yeah. the thing. It's like we're talking about a player who no one has said he's available. Like I, mm -hmm. I, I don't like where is that coming from? But like the, I, I don't. The T I Higgins don't thing know. at least has some credence because T demanded a yeah he demanded trade. trade. Brandon Ayuk yeah. is is upset, so like that, like he that is a thing as well. But like. The Niners, Liam, you've said it a couple times. They have no real reason to trade him unless he's Marco. that disgruntled and they just want to and get the rid Bengals of him. The Bengals have no reason to trade T. Higgins either. I'd be like, Get the, the only buddy. reason they would want to is because, like, shit, I guess they have Jamar Chase. So it's like, fuck, if we can get a second round pick, flip that for a receiver to kind of go. But then they him. lost Tyler Boyd, who they have that Trenton Irwin yeah, guy. Yeah, that's true. That's true. I don't know. Like, they're not going to start Trenton Irwin. 
No, no, I don't know. But but like I, I just thought that 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 quote was was kind of telling of the thought process. Uh, Al, I know you probably saw that quote too. Did you have any thoughts on on that? And then if you have any other quotes and anything you want to bring up with Mayo, let's do it. Because I I got some too, but I'm sure you got some things you want to talk about. Things that you said too. I mean. I mean, just in general, I mean, just talking from a general sense here, the burning cash comment really came back to to bite them in the ass. Oh, God. I yeah. mean, that's that's kind of the big thing for me is it literally came back to bite them in the ass by saying, yeah, we are we got cash to burn. Like, why are you going to say that if yeah. you're not really sure about what's going to happen? Don't promote like, I think he was fans. excited about it. Yeah. It sets up a, a, a level of like, you know, expectancy of what you think is going to happen, right? Correct. And that's, that's the big thing. Don't be like, and I'm going to cross sports here. Don't be like the Boston Red Sox where they say they're going to do one thing and then they do the complete opposite. We we'll already have like one shitty Sox. sports team in this town. We oh. don't need two. And right now it's looking like we're going to have two shitty sports teams. When, like I always say, 10, 15 years ago, it was the complete opposite. It was the baseball and the football were amazing and the basketball and the hockey lacked behind. Now that's done a complete 180. So again, if you got money to spend, you re-signed the key guys, that's great. Now go get a big name or two that can help you on offense. Defense, you're fine. Load up in the draft. Load up with, with depth in the draft, that's fine. Go get your quarterback and then trade for that receiver and then maybe try to sign another tackle. That that I think is your your game plan at this point. I don't know who, but you got to look for someone. I don't know someone. There, you know, but, I thought Mike why? Williams too. That was another name, Mike Williams. Like we were all fine player, but we're all trying to convince ourselves that like Mike Williams is the fucking untapped potential. He's the guy. It's like no. I think Wait, the number receiver is going to come through the draft. I think now now that's what I'm starting to think. I think they're going to get like you know they're hoping for a gem in the draft. Oh, there's no hoping, boys. The gem's there. Oh, buddy, we will we will get to that because every episode from here to the draft, we're going to talk about it. But we'll get to we'll get to the draft. Oh, and I'm um tomorrow time. Talking about that spend that blowing cash comment, by the way, that's crazy. Like the the way people reacted to that. Like I saw people being like, "Oh, Mayo's walking back to comment, blah blah." It's like, no, you moron. Like he even said it. Like his quote, I believe, um, was was along the lines of like, "We're gonna." spend money like methodically like in the right way like i'm just saying we have a lot of money like now it's this weird thing going on right now where patriots fans are now being hypercritical of anything gerard mayo does as some sort of like weird form of like allegiance to belichick and it's like god like this fan base it's so and i like to i like to think for better or worse i'm pretty plugged in on like the fan base on social media like where how people are thinking what the fucking word is and shit and it's insufferable guys it is horrible seeing people talk and it's like someone like like someone will retweet something where it's like oh um player x got re-signed or whatever and someone underneath would be like oh there goes horrible gm belichick again it's like what are you fucking talking about just because the, just because the patriots re-signed a guy he drafted like it, not everything needs to just like move on like i think the 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 three of us here are very big belichick guys and we're even kind of like let's move on like don't get me wrong i'd still die for belichick i'd kill for belichick but like you still got to love the team and like, you know, root for the team, be an optimistic fan, even though going into this year, I'm not as pessimistic as you guys, but I think it really is all going to come down to who's playing quarterback for them. But um, you guys know the bill sign, uh, Curtis Samuel. That's a good signing. Yeah. I did sign him, actually. That That's, That's another guy. Signing. dude. remember when it was between him and, um, who was the other guy? Curtis Samuel. And, um, I forget there were like the two receivers that were DJ out there. It, it, it might have been him, but I don't know. But it was like, these are the two big guys. And everybody was like, Curtis Samuel, Curtis Samuel. And it's like, why? And then he gets signed. Now he's gone. Like, yeah. he couldn't even make it on the commanders. Where like, if okay. you can't like put up stats there, come on. So, so let's play the game here. If we have money to burn and we're playing the Madden franchise mode, like, who would we want? our dream off season to be if we if we had the money to burn and could basically sign everyone like do we want Kirk Cousins do we want I want Baker Mayfield like Gardner Minshew no. like no, besides no, no, Kirk no. Cousins there's no 
good. Tyrod Taylor is way better than everyone else. But other than them, there's really no good quarterbacks. Running backs, did we want Saquon Barkley? No, we really Not wanted really. the market for a big running back. So, Al, anything? Do you – if I if these guys? are we are we including are we including the draft too? Or are we talking just strictly just, free agent? Just strictly free agent because this is money to burn. We got mm-hmm. money to burn. Free agency. Money to burn, money to burn. I think <laughs> I think for this current Patriots team, I think Brissett was a good signing, and I think yeah. we all saw it coming. Oh, yeah, Brissett, but I'm saying, but I'm saying yeah. if we could play the game, like if we could sign all the big names in the world, do we want Kirk Cousins? Not Kirk Cousins. I would have. I would have liked the Baker Mayfield. Jacoby Brissett. Yeah, that's me fine. Too. I would have liked Ridley just to have the number one receiver. And I know you hate everyone on this team, but I would have liked Tyron Smith as your left tackle as a stopgap for a couple of years. More power. Like Michael Pittman, I would burn the money. I get that one. That That's worth it in my eyes. Where'd like he go? I'm, did he go uh, back he to re-signed England? with the Colts, yeah, okay, which so. makes sense. They were never going to let him go. There was never a chance yeah. he was actually going to be a free See, agent. See, that's another thing, like big name, but, that but makes like, sense. you didn't miss out on him because he Mike Evans, too. Him. Like, there was almost no chance that Mike yeah. Evans was going to leave unless it was to the Chiefs, probably, and I don't think – I'd hope he wouldn't do that. But, like, other than that, like, no one's trying to kill themselves for Hollywood Brown, Calvin oh. Ridley, Darnell Mooney. Like, no. None of these guys are sick. Like – I we think have that the goes money to, to burn. It's of not the, a great free agency class. Dude, because of the contract that Ridley got, I think that shows there wasn't that much out there because people were willing to go so deep for him because there really wasn't anybody else readily available other than him. Yeah. Right. Like, linebacker, there are good players. We don't need fucking linebackers. Like, no. we, we don't need yeah. Levante He's David, Bobby Wagner, Devin White, or Patrick Queen. We don't need any of those guys. Like, don't get me wrong. Would that have been awesome? And I think that's where Patriots fans are like, you couldn't sign Pat or you couldn't sign whoever. And it's like, sure, they could. But then it, it, it goes into, like, why? Like, there's yeah. no... You're just What's the taking purpose? A, yeah, you're just taking away playing time from players that you hope to develop into the next... Patrick Queen into the next, yeah. um, what uh, Bobby Wagner, like you, yeah, like you, and you our still defense have was to perfect. We people. don't need to add to the fucking defense. The no, defense no, so fantastic. you really stick with offense. And other than like, if you can go out there and get a big left tackle, there's really nobody else out there that's going to jump out at you, which is why this draft in a month is so important. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so important. like the offensive tackles were extremely underwhelming. Besides, is Joan Williams still good? He used to be good when they went to the Super Bowl. I think is he, he is. Good? Yeah, I'm pretty sure he is. But again, like it's just no one. There's no. This is yeah. not overall. This is like a C plus B minus free agency. Class. Yeah, it's just not very good. No, no. So everybody, um, so, like, yeah. So that's know. the problem. Oh, so, but. so like, what do you? So like, what do you do? So you move on to the draft, which I think is, is kind of what's going on. And that's yeah. why like, or we get excited about, our, we signed Jalen Hawkins. Are we psyched? Whoa. Like, cool. I actually like, do like Jalen Hawkins, but no, like, he's like a, he'll be a special, teams special teams contributor. Teamer? Awesome. You need he's really good teams? in coverage. He is fantastic in coverage. Didn't but allow like, a touchdown last year. But. I don't know, but like, uh, like draft talk. And I get, we'll kind of segue into draft talk now too. Um, like I this is why I think you need to go quarterback with your first pick because there's really no one else that's gonna excite you this year, like like to sign as as a quarterback. Like sure, Kirk Cousins, but you already have Jacoby Brissett. So you're so Jacoby Brissett is gonna most likely be the guy. Um, but but then next year, like there's no one really that jumps out either. And then like you're gonna restart everything again next year with op with with offensive weapons and everything. It's like I like I, I think you just have to go quarterback at three in the draft and just go from there. Like build, build your team around them with the second pick. Maybe trade up late in the first and get someone like a receiver or something like that, or get a left tackle and then get a receiver or something. I don't know, but it, it's it's all but confirmed that the Patriots are going to take a quarterback. Um, mm-hmm. That's basically what Gerard Mayo said. He said, you know, we are definitely thinking quarterback, but like it's not set in stone. Uh, Liam. I know you were not happy probably seeing that comment because you yeah. are out of the three of us, the biggest Marvin Harrison Jr. guy. It's not here. even the biggest Marvin Harrison Jr. guy. I mean, yes, it is. But like it's it's common sense. Like he's he's the That's pick. Good. He's the best player in the draft by far. Better than all these guys. Let me ask you guys this. How certain 
are you guys that one of these quarterbacks that we can pick at three, you can have your option of the bunch. Would you be willing to lose your job over any of these guys if they don't pan out? Like, are you dead set on all three of the top three picks that you go, they can't fail. We're good. Al? There's there's one guy, and it's the guy I've been saying. I think it's Jaden Daniels. I really do. I know people can't miss. I think he's a can't miss. I think because he he was a Heisman winner in college. Not that that means anything, but he's proven he can be the best. He's proven he can compete with the best of the best. He has played in the SEC conference. He has not that he's won anything big, but he's that dual threat quarterback that can, you know, throw the ball deep and create plays with his legs. And it's something that the Patriots have not had. We, it's been joked about is, in the is dynasty. Is that why you want it? Because it's something we haven't had yet. And that's part of it, yes. A thousand percent it is. But that shouldn't be the reason. It should be because he's incredible. It can still be part right. of the reason. Right. It can still be part of the reason. It can still be part of the reason. It can be part, yes. But it's the shiny right. object that you haven't had yet. It's the button you can't push. Right, but I do think that Jaden Daniels is going to be good in this league for a right. long time as long as he's surrounded by competent talent. As long as he has a little bit of a decent line in front of them and a weapon or two, I think he's going to be fine. I think he's going to be really, really good. So you're not so sold on May. and uh, I am not or... sold at all on Drake yeah, you're May. You're not a May guy. You're not a May guy. I'm, I'm not a May guy. guy. I, I, prefer, I prefer a June guy. But anyways, you know, we'll move on. What about Michael Penix? What about Michael Penix? I'm all it's in that, on that. It's the, it's the knee, man. It's the it's the the constant knee surgeries that that worry me with them. That's fine. So let's I, play the game though. What if we could get Mister? I paint my fingernails. Are you guys sold on the number one overall pick? No, definitely. See, and, and to to answer your question, Liam, too, because it goes with that. I I think it's oh, a Mike. lose lose either way. I don't think you can afford to risk not taking a shot on one of these guys because if they do pan out. You're the you idiot like who didn't idiot, take yeah. them. But if you do take them and they don't pan out, you're the idiot that took them. So it's a lose-lose no matter what you do. No one's going to fault you for taking Marvin Harrison ever. I promise. He's not. There he's it is. not, he's not going to be there. You don't think he'll be there at three? No, 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 no. He'll be there at three. I don't think the Patriots are even going to eye at him. But I'm saying you won't look like an idiot if you take That's Marvin true. Harrison. If you That's look, true. If you look back five years from now – Jaden Daniels can be a one-time MVP or a all-around stud. If you have Marvin Harrison, who's putting up even a Mike Evans career, mm-hmm. no one's going to be like, "Well, that was a stupid." No, it's a great pick. But then, but then, what? Do you, okay, so, so so let's play that out then. Marvin Harrison Jr. at three, awesome. Everybody cheers. Confetti drops in Foxborough. Awesome, great pick. Yeah. I think everybody a plus. I pick. have a rip roaring orgy. What do you do with quarterback? That do you do you try to take a do you try to move up in later into the first round, or do you try to take a quarterback in the second round, assuming there's one of those guys there? Do you just do you just roll with Jacoby Brissett and then just kick the can down the road? What would you do? I don't care. <laughs> I knew you I, were going to re- say that. As I long really as you get don't. Yeah, like, I knew. It. I really I knew don't it. care. Like, yeah, take a flyer on one of these quarterbacks, like because it it doesn't matter. Like, shoot your shot with whoever's left in the second or third round. Bo Nix, JJ, JJ McCarthy apparently is going to be taken early. Props to his yeah, PR team so. for making him a top 10 pick when he, in the span that no one's played football in the last couple of months, all of a sudden everyone loves JJ McCarthy for his no drag reason. Stock, stock has shot up. It's crazy. Fucking incredible team he's got because I don't understand it at all. How, how does somebody's stock improve when he hasn't played a single snap? Uh, but more power to him. I don't care who it is. Take a take a second or a third, preferably a third, flyer on some random fucking quarterback, and maybe it'll work, maybe it won't. But it's low risk, high reward if they end up being good, and if it's not, then hey, we fucking tried. Like, it's something. Jacoby Brissett's a serviceable quarterback. We're not going to make the playoffs this year. Plot twist. It's like no surprise. We're not going to hey, be sick. I don't even agree with that, dude. Because if I, you I if do. you can oh, out, ah see. Listen, guys, I'll get I'll get fucking delusional. You want me yeah. to? If oh, you if you, you nail the quarterback, out. If if they hit on Jaden Daniels and then they get fucking Lad McConkey 
whatever the fuck you want to get out there. The you don't think Jaden Daniels in a serviceable offense in this defense can fight for a final playoff spot? I still think they'd be a year or two away. Yeah, I crazy, do. Man. I, I think crazy. I, I think they would. I think they would be. Uh, you're not crazy, I think, but I think no, I he is crazy. Be crazy, well, right? I think he, they would be a six or seven win team with the with six or two seven or three, with two or three games that they lose by a possession. Yeah. I think they get they're more competitive than twenty. That means they could easily be a ten win team. That's what yeah, that means. They're not going if they're to. a ten win team, they could be a twelve win team. Like, yeah, dude. I dude, guess. And if they're a twelve win yeah. team, you know what that means? In the land of make believe, yeah, totally. <laughs> no, seriously, though, you guys don't think that. Say, say they hit on on Jaden Daniels or Drake or whoever it is. Just say that quarterback is like the guy, like very good rookie year. And, and you don't think they get some piece? They draft some rookie receiver that ends up being good or whatever. Not, not he won't be, you know. Marvin Harrison Jr. good right now, but let's just say he's good. You don't think the Patriots can put up 10 wins and fight for a final playoff spot this year? No, because their schedule is so hard too next year. Have you seen that, that schedule? The team that they isn't play? very good. Like, let's put the call defense is fade. stellar, though, right? Uh, yes, they are. I don't care if we draft Andrew Luck with the third pick. We're not going to make the fucking playoffs. Like okay. The team's okay. Just not good. I am ready to make a sizable bet with one of you guys we, to start I, this year. Let me see how want. the draft goes and let me see how everything goes. Give you but I'm letting you know. House. I'm talking three digits. Okay. Oh my Mike, I will, Mike, I will bet you $100 right now on the show that the New England Patriots do not make the playoffs in 2020. I can't do that right now. I can't do that right now. I can't do that right now because I don't know what they're doing with the draft. I said wait till after the draft. Okay. He's, so the is, day after Liam, the draft. Liam, you hear him? He's a little chicken shit. He, yeah, he, he can't is. even no, go The it. day after the draft. You know what? Fuck you. Hundred dollars. The Patriots are making the playoffs. All right, shake on that right now. Shake oh on it. Shake, shake, oh, shake dude, this dick. Shake on it. Shake on it. Hundred bucks. Dickhead. I just watched Mom. Al Rob Mike. <laughs> I'm gonna laugh airwaves. in all your, fa- all two of you, all your the most hey. benign robbery I've hey, ever dipshit. seen. Hey, dipshit! Guess what? If they, it's a win-win for me because if they don't make the playoffs, I'm a hundred bucks richer. And if they go to the playoffs, then I can actually enjoy it. And I'll say, you, you know, know what's funny? Mike, you buy said, yourself something nice. You said, yeah. "Hey, dipshit!" And me and Liam both looked. <laughs> <laughs> that was funny. That is that, so was, that was funny. funny. Oh, that's uh, funny. Liam, Liam, I wanted to ask you. You texted us something earlier today. What did you say? I don't have the text because I got a new phone. You know, no big deal. Got a new phone. But uh, you, you said something where you had something about a quarterback, in from like some something you wanted to bring up to us, a quarterback situation that you wanted to toss out to us, or something along those it, lines. It, it, it was it was stats really. It, it's more like conjecture oh. than anything else. Uh, if fine, if huh? it's what what I was thinking of it, it's if for this like is the court. I'm fine with the, that. The Drake May believers out there, because my buddy is a huge Drake May is the the perfect Patriots quarterback. He's gonna. You're say either all in on him or, him. or yeah. you hate him. He's like, if we draft Drake May, you know, six more Super Bowls, and I'm like, dude, buddy. Tell yeah. him about Al's bet that he's willing to make. I'm mm. sure he'll take some of Al's money too. Oh, I'm sure. Yeah. yeah. Well, <laughs> yeah. let's, let's uh-huh. think about that end result there. But so I was looking this up, and there was a stat that teams quote unquote hit on first round quarterbacks 40% of the time in overall NFL history. Okay. It's terrible. It is negligence to pick a quarterback in the first round. That is not a good bet. That's like owning a lion. Like there is little upside and huge downside that something bad is going to happen. Like there is, it's negligent behavior for you to embark in this. I'm not convinced. That's why I asked you the question earlier. I'm not convinced that any of these top three quarterbacks are surefire things. Caleb is you know, very contentious first overall pick. A lot of people have their flaws. In them. My buddy's a Bears fan. My buddy wanted Justin Fields. He hasn't talked to me since Justin Fields been traded. He might have hung himself. Why would you want? Ju- okay. Justin a lot Fields. of Bears fans do though. They they aren't sold on this dude. He's kind of a lesbian. And then Drake May. There's a reason why none of us are sold on him. His footwork suspect. Like I, he just doesn't really move the needle for me doesn't seem like that stud quarterback he, he makes his plays but maybe i'm just scoring from all the other unc quarterbacks like 
Mitch Trubisky and terrible people like that, but he he didn't play a lot either. He has 26 starts in college. Um, yeah. That 40% hit rate drops to 28% when they have less than 30 starts beforehand. So Drake May has 26 starts and J.J. McCarthy has 28 starts. So unless they're okay. sitting behind another quarterback – Usually that ends very poorly for the dude who hasn't played a lot in college. I'm not True. sold on Drake May. Jaden Daniels is awesome. He's big time. He's fun to watch. He's got exciting. a beautiful deep ball. Yep, he's exciting. He could run the ball. The arm strength isn't stellar. It's not the worst thing in the world. We've seen a lot of quarterbacks without great arm strength that have gone out and balled. It's not always about the Josh Allen 80-yard pass down the field. I think Jaden Daniels would be fine regardless. I'm not super concerned about the injury stuff. I saw him protect himself a lot. I was watching the all 22 film of him playing Alabama. Cause that's probably the best fucking defense that you can compare to a NFL defense. And he killed it. He, he was very good. In fact, I don't like any of his receivers. I wouldn't take any of the, I wouldn't take neighbors in the first round. He looks lazy. He fucking runs terrible routes. People think the he fuck, might be the first. He, yeah. That's egregious. That's clearly guys. a smoke screen in my eyes. I think he's fucking awful. Like he's lazy. He runs terrible routes. He was truly terrible to watch in the film, Jaden Daniels' film I was watching. Just not sold. Like, none of these guys, there's no Peyton Manning in this draft where like, he's a legacy. This is perfect. There's no Andrew Luck. There's nobody who's like, this is a surefire thing. All of them have their problems and concerns, and people can poke holes in all their game. I'm just, I'm not convinced. If me and Al are correct here in saying that we're not going to make the playoffs and we're kicking the can down the road anyway because we're thinking two, three years ahead, Harris is the only choice. It's clear. I need him. I need him. And like Bo Nix, if you just take a flyer on him with the third, he could be sick. Everyone then you should... better fly out to Arizona, pal, because he ain't ending up here. I'm going to tell you that yeah, right now. That, that's fine. Like, I don't care who we get. I think it's he's a fine flyer, like in the later round. Everyone's criticizing him because like 30% of his passes were within 10 yards. He ran the same offense as Justin yeah, Herbert did. Yeah. yeah. And Justin Herbert seems pretty fucking good to me. Like, I'm not worried about it. Yeah, he's like a million years old because he stayed in college for six years. I don't care. And if you're not sold on Bo Nix, Michael Penix, take the flyer. I don't give a shit. It seems I, like his stock is dropping and JJ is, is moving up. Yep. doesn't make any sense to me. I kind of would assume it's the opposite because Penix was killing it in the, the playoffs. But I'm just not sold. We're kicking the can down the road anyway. Take the surefire prospect, the blue chip. It's right there. It's easy. We have Shaquille O'Neal in the draft, and we're thinking about taking Chris Webber because, like, I was gonna it's say cool. Alonzo Mourning. Well, what about this? What about I love this? Zoe. You have you guys seen who's been talking glowingly about JJ McCarthy? Uh, the Washington Commanders. Harbaugh. Harbaugh has been talking about oh, McCarthy yeah, yeah. like he's the second coming of Jesus. Yeah. How about this, guys? What if what if he really wants McCarthy? Would you flip the third pick to the Chargers for Justin Herbert? That would never happen. So here's the thing. Harbaugh comes in. He wants to make a splash. He wants his own team. There, he already traded yeah. away Mike Williams and Keenan Allen and Austin Eckler. You're, so you're gonna not going to have a good team. The, the Chargers are rebuilding. The Chargers are in nerd. the same they spot are. as the Patriots. They are. I'm going to get nerdy I'm going to keep second. talking every time Al's about to I talk. Know. <laughs> I know. Um, the Chargers have about a hundred dollar million, a hundred million dollars in dead cap. A hundred dollar million. Get, yeah, hundred dollar million. I'm exactly. on your ass this episode because you talk shit about my. I don't even remember what it was. I did too, but I'm I'm, I'm off. I, listen, I'm off tonight. I, I get a that. sweet candy. But off. they, the Chargers, will have a hundred million dollar cap hit over the next two years if they get rid of Justin Herbert. So they, there was a so thing where probably they, not. yeah, so he's probably going to stay in, in LA just a yeah. thought. And like, just cause he was his college coach doesn't really mean a whole lot. I don't know if you guys remember no. Pete Carroll was the head coach at USC. He had this incredible safety that everyone loved called Taylor Mays. And he Whoa. went nuts in the call. Breaking news. Ooh, I know what you're about to me. say, Al. I know what you're yeah, about to say. Yeah, you, you, it's not anything like crazy, Leon. No, I saw it, though. I just saw yeah, it. Yeah, you see that? Uh, former Patriots and Bills running back Damian Harris retires at the age of 27. 
Wow. Damn. Well, that blows. I know. See that's it. Yeah, I just saw that. I like Damian Harris when he was. I did too, but you went to the Bills. I'm sorry. That's yeah. like when Red Sox players would go to the Yankees. I'm sorry, man. I know. Like it I sucks, know. but like you know, I hope everything's okay. I hope health wise he's good. <laughs> even though I'm sure that's probably half of why he's retiring. But, but yeah, see ya. But yeah, yeah, but yeah he, I he got all he, he wanted though. He got a Super Bowl. God. Yeah, he did. He got a Super Bowl. He was and he played great too. Um, I don't, I, I don't actually think the Chargers will trade for it. I, I do no. think ultimately, the, and this is where I see it out, like actually going. The Patriots are going to end up with Drake May with the third pick. That's where it's going to go. Yeah, and whether whether we all want it or don't, because don't. Caleb Williams is going one. I think the Commanders are going to take Jaden Daniels. It's going to be Marvin Harrison Jr. There. It's going to be Drake May. Patriots are going to take Drake May. Drake May is going to have the career he has. Marvin uh, Harrison Jr. is going to ball out, and you're going to see a lot of skeptics in hindsight and second-guessing of that pick. I guarantee you that's exactly how it's going to happen. And they'll take, like, Xavier Leggett with the second-round pick or something like I that. I would love Xavier I would Leggett. love that, I think too. He's, I think Why he's is gonna everyone so really high on him? I, I haven't watched the film. Good route runner can, you know, catch yeah. the ball deep in the outside. Just a good, uh, solid, solid wide receiver. Is he big? Yeah. Yeah, I think he's like here. I'm gonna look him up real quick. I think he was like Mike. Correct me if I'm wrong. Was he like six two, six three? Yeah, he's a he. They 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 called him like a big, uh, like a big bodied receiver or like yeah, six like three a taller one. So yeah, six three. I'm fine with that. Six three receiver. You got him in there with all our little you know half pint short stuff. I'm cool with it. But I don't know. It's it, it's 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 fascinating to see what the Patriots are going to do with this pick because all signs right now are pointing to them taking a quarterback, which you can see the pros and cons of both of it, where it's like, you know, like, like you said, Liam, historically, the hit rate on them, you never know. But then there are still players that do hit in the first round and, you know, people are first round prospects for a reason. Most of the time, sometimes they're not, but who knows? And it's like, if you if you kick the can down the road like next year, you're just gonna go through the same exact thing. And you have to hope, or no, you would probably just assume, even if you think the Patriots aren't gonna be great, if they win seven or eight games max, they're gonna be picking with what the 10th pick or something. Like that's not gonna that's not gonna get you uh you, you know, you're gonna have to trade up, get rid of assets to trade up to get a quarterback. You you don't want to be here again. So my thought process is just while you're here. Take one of the talented guys. You hope it's Jaden Daniels because he does have a higher upside. But and also, by the way, by talented Drake, guys, do you mean talented quarterbacks? Le, yes, yes, because I think Marvin Harrison Jr. would be the obvious pick here. But the in, the one thing that people don't want to talk about with Drake May, one of the main reasons he's starting to fall down, guys, he's a not exciting white quarterback. People don't want that anymore. This is not a race thing or anything. This is just a, it is what it is. Caleb Williams, exciting, throw off his back foot, big throws, blah, blah, blah. Jaden Daniels, Heisman winner, can juke anybody out of his shoes, all that stuff, crazy. J.J. McCarthy's coming out of nowhere, but there's always someone. Michael Penix, lefty, you know, can run, can do all this crazy stuff. Like, all these other guys are more exciting than him. And Drake, so May, you see him and you're just kind of like... People. You're kind of like, I, I don't, maybe I do. I don't know. You're just kind of like, oh, he's just like a little goofy Matt Jones looking guy. That's all he is. But, so I don't want the Patriots to do to one of these quarterbacks what they did to Mac Jones. And we are no. right back in this same spot in four years. That's what I'm thinking. That's why I'd rather take Mark because nothing's really changed from last year. If we Who's couldn't do the... it with Bill Belichick, I don't think we're going to do it with Gerard Mayo. Like, I'm going to give him the benefit of the doubt and say he'll probably be a good coach. He won't be better than Bill. And our talent isn't a whole lot better by any means. So we get one of these guys. We get Jaden Daniels. Who's to say he doesn't see ghosts and suffer the same miserable fate as Mac Jones? Because when they drafted Mac Jones, at very least, me and Mike had a lot of faith in him. Al, not so much, and he did prove that he could be a serviceable quarterback. But... Al hated him. Let's just get yeah. that out there. Al hated yeah. him. And he said as much and more power to him. He would have been right if he thought very long term. But, like, it, this very well could happen again with any of these quarterbacks, and it just seems so not worth it. Why don't we build the structure around, and then in two years we get a, have such a good team minus a quarterback that we're in a position like when Tom Brady went to the box and all they needed was a quarterback 
or okay. when Brock Purdy goes to the 49ers and they just need some dude to play above average and they can go to the Super Bowl. That seems to be a winning formula compared to what every other team is trying to do where they get the quarterback and then figure it out from there. Because Justin Herbert looked fucking That's terrible true. last year. That's true. A lot, of, a lot of teams do do that where they will grab the quarterback and go forward. Yeah. Now, really, they will figure it out. Sure. It's like, really? Because it didn't work for Justin Fields. Hasn't worked for Justin Herbert. Didn't work for any of works for either one of them. For no. your for your kick the can down the road, your quarterback free agents next year, you might be able to talk me into doing it. So <laughs> you have Russell Wilson, no, Dak Prescott, meh, Jared Goff, Ugh. maybe for a couple of years just to kind of bridge the gap. I do like Jimmy Jared G, Goff. Jordan Love, you might Jimmy be depending. G. This is where I start to see. So Trevor Lawrence is a free agent next year. Don't do this. I could see the if if Trevor Lawrence and Marvin Harrison Jr. Do you like that? I hate Trevor Lawrence. I know you. I, uh, um, but but they could. There's they could go get Justin Fields again. I wouldn't do that. But like yeah. really, your main guys are going to be Dak Prescott, Jared Goff, Jimmy G, Jordan Love. Maybe you can get Jordan Love away from Green Bay. Um, Call me crazy. I think Dak Prescott would be sick on the Patriots, and I hate him. I think he'd be sick on the Patriots. I think he would. Well, yeah, he'd be sick because he'd be you know sick he's on a, the bench every game. You know he's a cowboy. I know. I'm just saying I hate him, and I would hate him. I think he'd be good. Shit, we have. I, know. I think he'd be good. We have broken yeah, new ground I know, here. I know. That. Well, we've broken Liam. Well, Holy I gotta shit. say. I, I wouldn't loved, hate that either. I loved either. him in college. I did love him at Mississippi. Only because he reminded me a lot of McNabb. And then, you I know, he that. went to the Cowboys. And I fucking, he, he just, but he sucked on the Cowboys. Like, if he won anything, then I definitely hate him. But he, he's a victim of that horrible, being on the Cowboys is like being in the movie Saw. Like, you're going to lose a limb. It's going to be bloody. You're not going to have a good time. Like, you can save yourself. And you can come to a good franchise. I, I think there's some redemption in here somewhere. Um. Okay. Yeah. Saw saw movies. I didn't think we'd get that that reference. Um. So. Always room. Yeah. I don't know. It, it's just going to be interesting. Like I said, the draft is a month away. It's kind of. I mean, there's going to be so many different thought process. People saying the Patriots might trade out. They're going to take whoever. They're going to do this. They're going to do that. This is going to be a long month until we get to the draft. Um. I I don't have anything else. Do you guys have anything else that you'd like to discuss tonight while we're all here? I'm just so hung up on Marvin Harrison. It hurts. So who, so we do it every week. So let's do it again. Who are they taking at three? Okay. Yeah. Who's, yeah. Let's go. Let's end. Let's end the episode again every week. Liam, who are they taking at three? I want Marv. The whole Marv and nothing but Marvin Harrison Jr. First ballot Hall of Famer. I w- I'll make any bet that Marvin Harrison Jr. will be a Hall of Famer. I'll even bet he's going to be a Super Bowl champion. You take him at three. Anything less than that is a huge, catastrophic disservice in my eyes. Okay. I mean, my mine's easy. I think I said it before. I think Drake May. I'm, I'm circling the drain on Drake May. That's I think that's going to be the guy that That is up. so wild. But, like, are you sold on Drake May? Like, you know. Okay. I'm not sold on anyone. Okay. Just, just like, because that's I don't why even, I asked earlier. If I, I don't, you I, I love don't. this quarterback and it doesn't pan out, you lose your job. So whatever new job you're getting, well, I think the quarterback doesn't work out, you're jobless. And same goes for Al. If Jaden Daniels doesn't end up being a star, Al is no longer a teacher. He's, you know, wearing thigh high boots. Well, well wait, wait, a minute, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Time out here. I didn't agree to that part. That's what I said. I said you are hanging your hat. I thought we were stuff. talking. I thought we were talking about hypothetical NFL GM jobs here. Yeah, you got I mean, to like, make no, that clear but, in the fine, but, but, in the fine we, print there. But Liam. we can, we can, we can pull this over because we're not GMs. Let's pull this over to real life. Let's put some real life stake in this. Oh, no, I, I'm not betting if, my teaching job. Are you nuts? If I'm betting my job, <laughs> I'm betting it on Marvin. Harrison. I need the four hundred one k in the pension. That, yeah, that sounds on, like a you problem. Then, then pick Marvin Harrison. Pick the safe. No, thing. I'm not going to pick Marvin Harrison. Okay. See, see, you have no, see, you have no dog in the fight. You're not taking this as personally as you should. This is our team. This is our livelihood. And if you choose poorly, then we're going to be fucking miserable for another four years. We're going to be May. miserable anyway. Drake May is the guy. No, Drake May. No, I think not. I think he's worth it. I think Drake May is is worth the risk. Begrudgingly, begrudgingly, I'm going to agree with Mike. I think it's going to be Drake May. Damn right. Oh my god, I'm going to kill Damn myself. Right. 
Let's uh, go. I'm not going to be happy about it. There and this it time, this time when he does get drafted, I'm actually going to just stick with my first reaction. Unlike when Mac Jones got drafted and I thought originally this is horrible and yeah, I should have stuck with it. it. Yep. I'm not going to talk myself into it. Just first. But he doesn't make good decisions. He, he he misses on a lot of easy throws. I, his footwork is suspect. I, I don't get it. I know. I'm saying here. Nick Liam. Nope. You you throw the flying Elvis on his on his helmet, he'll be fine. He'll be fine. That's what I think. I'm pretty sure we said the same thing about Mac Jones. I, I'm sure we turned out so I'm hard. sure we did. Um but all right, you guys have anything else before we get out? Marvin. Marvin Harrison. Yeah, we got it. All right. Jaden Daniels. Jaden Daniels. Drake May, let's go. On that note, we'll see you guys next week. Um for another riveting draft talk. What are they gonna do? We'll have no fucking clue for a month from now. We out. Episode 127, we're out. See ya.